Hello and welcome back to the Cartoon Studio. Now, if you're viewing this on Sunday, I'm terribly sorry. It means something went very wrong. I have been very busy this week with comics pages, which is probably the most time consuming of all the things I do. If, however, it's a Saturday and you're seeing this video, then ignore what I just said. I did extremely well and was ahead of time. But I probably think it's going to be a Sunday. Anyway, I did promise you a Haggard the Horrible this week and I'm going to deliver. Uh, but Aaron, don't worry. The next one I do, the next, my version of a cartoon that I do will be The Wizard of Id. I've got the joke. It's just a case of putting it together and I'll be putting that up some point in the future. I don't want to do it every week because otherwise that's all I'll be doing. So, uh, but it will be, it, it will be the next one. Um, so without further ado and any preamble or any more waiting time with the chit chat, shall we go and draw the crazy Viking? I think we should. Right, here we go. Hagar the Horrible. So I guess, actually I'm a little bit nervous. I'll admit to being a little bit nervous about this one because the um, the anti-cat one went, well, I thought it went quite well. And uh, now it's the second one. Oh, you've got to keep it up now. So here we go. And I'm going to do it the way that Charles Schultz always used to do it. He used to put the lettering in first, and then um, and then put the characters in afterwards. Even more important nowadays, I think, because um, although Hagar the Horror was definitely created for the uh, the comics page with a reduction in comic strips, um, with with a very very heavy black lines, you st the lettering now has to be a lot larger because. That has to also compensate for the continued shrinkage in newspaper strip size. So we'll put it all in first, shall we? So um, right, I may have to go quiet here whilst I letter it out, but talk amongst yourselves. Let's all hear what you've been up to. I've been up to lots of things. Right, we're done. We're done with that. Now onto the drawing-y bit. Like I said, I was a little bit, I am a little bit nervous about this. Um, Hagar, on the face of it, looks like a very simple character to draw. But when I did a few rough sketches, shall we say, I thought, actually, you know what? Dick Brown is actually very clever. He made it look so simple. And also, I'm drawing it in my style, but also recognisable, because the whole point of this segment is, or uh, well, this section of my YouTube channel is, if I drew dot dot dot. See, I don't think Dick Brown ever gave Hagar uh, a tongue. As such I loved it when Hagar had his his shield out whatever you and we'll put on one of his chunky slabs slab of rock tables that he used to like doing there we go so there's the rough outline of Hagar he had no ears. And Dr. Zoot or Zook or I say I could have it wrong. We'll have, we'll have to look into that. The sad thing about um, Dick Brown's Hagar is that 
you never got to to really get the full potential of what what Dick Brown had. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it's fine under his son, and he, who's also sadly passed. I I understand, and that's uh, that's a huge pity. But we never got the the full potential of Dick Brown's Hagar before we lost him. I mean, he was quite old, or well, quite a lot older, should we say, when um, when he actually started it. Because, of course, he was he worked with uh, oh, what's it, Mort Mort Walker on High and Lois. He did that for many many years. So. Um, and then he just decided to disappear into his basement one weekend. Realised his eyes his eyes were going, his his heart wasn't particularly good, and he didn't want to leave his family struggling. So we went down to his basement. I said, "I'm not coming out until I've got a cartoon strip that I can syndicate." And he came out a while later with with Hagar. Brilliant. I don't know how much of that is true and how much of it is just myth you know, that has been perpetuated over the over the space of time it's a nice story now there are two ways of doing Hagar's bare skin shall we say there's this with this blah, 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 this way which is two rows of these or sometimes just do them in one I'll bring this over here a bit more actually. There. I'll put a few of these things. It's bear skin, so I'm gonna put a few that I'll put a few of those on as well. And he had a lot of this shading, didn't he, going on? And I think his balloons were a little strong. I'm gonna check on that. I get my Handy reference over here, yes. They were more rectangular-ish. The word balloons. You say, you should know everything about cartoons. You've been here for so long. Yeah, I've also read a tremendous amount of these books over the years. And you tend to forget who drew what. Also a lot of solids, so I'm going to do this, and that will all be in black. Um, the table, I would normally give it a bit of a few cracks like that, but again with the shading and the shield, I think the light source is basically coming from this way. Um, right, big headshot of Dr. Zook. I think this would have been done because uh, you want to get the point over. So you do it with a large panel because of the, the reduction in the size of all the comic strips that are out there, particularly now more so than ever. But um, in, in those days, it was starting to happen. They were starting to ruin the fun for everyone so as so you get a little bit more advertisement in there now this is where it's going to differ quite strongly from Hagar because now I'm going to draw my hands my cartoon hands in there geez I'd love it wouldn't it be nice if anyone at King Features just happened to come across this and think oh you know what we'll have him draw Hagar forever I'd like that. Well, someone's got a drawing. Why not me? Um, Doctor Zoot Zook Zoop Zop Zop Zig Zack Zock, whatever his name was. He, um, I always imagined his outfit to be solid black. But when I saw it, it wasn't. It was, it was like this. I don't know whether I'm gonna. Do that or not, or whether I'm going to go do him solid black. Should wait to find out. It's very exciting. Also, I draw a lot of this stuff on my characters. This, I don't know what I don't think they're warts. I don't know what they are, but it, it is the time in history where people had very warty faces. 
So it probably sound probably about right. Okay, what can I tell you about I got the horrible? Absolutely nothing. That was quick. Let's move on. Yeah. And now Helgar. Now I think we'll do the the scenery first. It's a bit wobbly. I think it was a bit wobbly. I'm not it's not me going wobbly. I think it was wobbly. And nine shots, yes. Doorway was like this. The wooden. I was, I was actually going through all the various Hagar books, and it was very impressive the way he simplified complicated things. He did it very well. He was very good at that. Uh, which way should we go? Yes, we'll have a look at this. Now, when I was doing the various sketches of the characters, Helga was probably the more difficult of them all. He had a definite certain way of doing it. And of course, I've got to pit it in with my style. And my style would have had her Definitely more like this. And yes, so we'll have I'm gonna do the eyes. I think they were just I think he just did them like that. That's it. And then my mouths go like this. His didn't. But we're drawing it. In my side, it's still got to be Hagar, it's still got to be recognisable as the characters. But it's also got to be identifiable as a Carl Dixon cartoon. So, what have you been doing? I ask this every week, don't I? And no one ever tells me. One of these days, one of you will. I've been extremely busy as the first bit pointed out, the first the introduction of the video pointed out. Been having to do a lot of comics pages. Yeah, very busy. I bought two new rubbers, little putty rubbers. That was exciting. That's a shopping trip for me, that is. Uh, do I? I'm not too sure whether I've got this the right size actually. No, yeah. I should have got me putty rubber out first, shouldn't I? Oh God! Come on, you can do it. There we have it. I think that might be the wrong size. It probably is. I'll uh... we'll have a look now. Right now, Hagar. Had these very thick legs, but of course we're not drawing in that way. I, I'm going to draw the shield a bit lower down on his body. No, he's wrong. I know it's going to be wrong. I'm not happy with it. Putty rubbers. Never used to use them. Do now. They don't smudge. Draw them a little bit lower, like you know, Helga's up here. She's very upright, is Helga. So that would be a line there. He's a little bit. Despond. And also, he's very henpecked, and a good way of drawing a henpecked husband is to make them slightly smaller. I noticed that with handicap. And if you look at my um, Adam and Eve cartoon strips, you'll notice that Adam is slightly smaller than Eve. Has it gone too big again? I don't know. A bit of a snuffy smith thing going on there i noticed when i was looking at them i thought yeah, he's got a he's got a bit of a snuffy smith thing going on i 
would like to draw Snuffy Smith, but I don't know much about him. Like I said, now I draw my shields. See, a lot of um, uh, cartoonist artists would have the shield up here. But I think it looks a little bit better, like it's hanging down a bit. Nothing to do with him being despondent. I just personally, I think it's a little more pleasing that way. I don't know what you think. Um, also, I, I noticed when it came to drawing it, with his bare his bare skin, sometimes it would be hanging from that side, and sometimes from that side, whatever suited him. And it's that makes perfect sense to me. I can completely understand why why he did that. Just rather than trying to get right every time, he just did it the way that it looked best. I get that. Once again, not a Dick Brown hand. Definitely one of mine, the way that I would draw it. That's the bottom half of his bearskin tunic. Yeah, just change it a little bit. Maybe bring it over here a bit more. Um, Yeah, we'll sort of put a mix of the two. I wouldn't normally do it this way either. Now, Hagar, he had a thing like on, on the leg here. He had it like that. It was for ease. Uh, make it look good, I suppose, on the page. Well, I'm more interested in the way that I would draw it, which is probably the way they would have done it. And I give them a big toe up there. And we'll have him going to another table. I don't know. I'll, I'll draw the table like this. And let's have his beer mug frothing with beer. And once again, my way of drawing it. So the doctor's told him, you've got to cut out all this stuff. And the only thing he hears is... You've also got to cut out the things that stress you. And that is his wife. There you go. So that is the Hagar strip pretty much complete. Should we give it some more? And this is all. Um, I'll do a little yeah, very sparse background. See, once again, I think he took his background from Crazy Cat. You know, there'd be like this this line with a few rocks or stones or maybe even another house. I don't know. And it would just be an obscure bit in the background and it would all be solids. OK, so we've got all this sort of stuff done. I'm now going to... to debate. Can I say that? Can I say that on YouTube? I think I just did. Um, yeah. And there we have it. So that is the strip. Do I draw those bigger? Do I rub that out and make it bigger? No, I think everything's there. If I enlarge it now, I wouldn't get enough, enough drawn. I wouldn't get that in there. No, I think I'm going to stick with that. Right, okay. We're done. Right, so now I'm going to go away because I can do that, and I'm going to um, I'm going to put the book. Actually, no, I can do the borders whilst I'm here, can't I? Right, where's a uh, reasonable sized pen? And I should because he drew them freehand, so I'm going to draw them freehand as well. So um, you can see there was just a slight movement in in the panels, which made you think, right, that was he drew them properly bordered properly, correctly, and they just went over them. Now I don't know what he used 
to ink his cartoons. I suspect he probably used markers. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use a brush. And we'll get to that in a minute. Now with this panel, I think I'll have this panel open. Once again, I don't think Dick Brown did a great deal of open panels. But this is where it's down to, if I drew the comic strip, this is what it would look like. So I guess if I've done that, I must do the rest of them like that, mustn't I? Yeah. All about consistency, children. Do you like this? Are you enjoying it? Well, you know, all you've got to do is like and subscribe. Because you, YouTube, you like that sort of stuff. I told you, they, they keep contacting me and say, you've got another one. Now I do that. Now, he would never do that. I've never seen him do that. But once again, that's me. And it's my YouTube channel. So, go listen to me. BC, Johnny Hart did this in BC as well. Did all of his panels freehand. There's probably a whole bunch of them out there that did it. But yeah, it's strange because when he worked with Mort Walker, that was most definitely drawn with a ruler. Also, it helps. This is a one of the thicker pens. This is a number six. I, I don't think it goes up much higher. It might go to a seven, but I haven't got one here. But I probably have. But lately, I think I've got a gremlin in the studio. Couldn't find me a knife last night. And I thought, oh, well, I looked under the drawing board. I looked everywhere for it. I couldn't find it. In case it had slipped under. Couldn't find it anywhere. Came for it this morning. It was under the drawing board. So I'm not quite sure what the little devils are about. I'm not impressed. Right, so there we go. There's that. And we'll come back in a couple of seconds. I'm just going to check over the writing, make sure I get everything right. And then we shall ink the lettering and the cartoon. Right, see you in a couple of seconds. And we're back again. Right, I've been over it and I found out it wasn't Dr. Zoot, it was Dr. Zook. So I told you you were all wrong. I knew what I was talking about. Uh, okay, also, when it comes to the lettering, I noticed that Dick Brown would sometimes highlight some words, make them slightly thicker, shall we say. So what I've done is I've gone over it. And I, I don't know if you can make it out or not. I've underlined certain words that I would like to have thickened. And that's what we'll do. And I'm going to use a number four pen and a number six pen. Number six being the largest I can find until the gremlin puts the other ones back. But we won't talk about that. OK, so I'm going to go quiet, probably put a bit of music on, may even speed this little bit up because what can you say about lettering other than there it is. Right, so I shall... Speak to you again in a couple of a minute or so. back did you enjoy that okay right right now we're doing the inking now, now i normally draw with a brush now this is the one i use for my comic pages and what have you in the fine detailed work that's a triple zero we've been through this before on a couple of other videos ago so i'm going to put that to the one side because i don't need that this is a slightly larger one this is what i do for my uh, coloring books and and things that it needs a slightly thicker line now once again looking at the Hagar strip and although it's in my style I have to keep it true as true as I possibly can to the comic strip is I noticed that the outlines of the characters were actually thicker than the outlines of the borders so the only way I can do that 
is to use a large brush. Now that's explained. We could all stop asking silly questions. Let's just get on with it, shall we? So uh, I haven't used this brush for a while, so it might take a bit of time to get the ink flowing on it, flowing properly, shall we say. And this paper, it used to be really good. I used to love it. It's, um, it's a cartridge paper, Dale Rowney. Eh? Usually very good. I've always been, been impressed with Dale Rowney stuff, but I don't know. Lately it comes to me and it's just not right. Sometimes the, the ink doesn't flow. You can't get the detailed work on it as well. Now I'm still not sure whether I'm going to do Dr. Zook in um, solid black or as he is. I like him in solid black, but I think I'm going to have to stick to what it is and just do him with the, the same sort of effect that Hagar's bear skin's got. All right. Also, Dick Brown didn't have many thick and thin lines. In fact, I don't think he had any, to be honest with you. But I do like to do a bit of thick and thin. So we may... Yes, we will. We'll go with that, because that's how I would do it. If they, if King Peter's come along and are now almost convinced they're going to, ring at the bell and say, God damn it! Because everyone in America starts off by saying that. That's what we think anyway. But God damn it! We're looking for a Hagar. Maybe Hagar, but Hagar. And I won't do any more of that because it's massively embarrassing. Because <laughs> I can do lots of accents, but I can't really do an American one unless I'll start off by saying, God damn it! Because that's what they all seem to say in the TV programme, don't they? Um, oh, I think I drew that in because I was going to draw another hand. Oh, I have to do this. Oh, I have to draw the hand free hand. I have to guess where it all goes. Have I got away with it? Everyone, don't, no one, no one look. I think I got away with it. Whew. And I also have ruffles or folds and stuff like that. Anyway, getting back to the exciting thing, what would happen if King Features contacted me and started up by saying, God damn it. And uh, we've seen your Hagar, the horrible comic strip, and we think you should take over. You should be the new Hagar artist. And after after everyone's picked me up off the floor, and um, and I've, got, I've said, yes, definitely, let's do it. Then you could be seeing this on a daily basis. Uh, it's nice to dream. It is nice to dream. You know, you could do that. You could you could actually write in to King Features and say, have you seen this artist on YouTube? Don't look too closely, but have you seen him? You should have him for drawing Hagar. And if enough people say it, they'll have a look. And you never know. You could be guilty of inflicting me on the rest of the world. Go on, do it, do it, go on, do it. That's after you've liked and subscribed, of course. Oh, do you see what I did there? Oh, that was a double one, that was. That even impressed me. Actually, I think on the beard, I think this is where he did do thick and thin. So it makes me wonder whether he did work with a brush. Maybe a dip pen. Ah, maybe he did. Yeah, do that for me. Contact King Features Syndicate. And then when I'm sitting in my Florida mansion, that's where all old people go, isn't it? Cocoon Central. And uh, I can thank you all. I want, I want to do the lines. Yeah, go on, let's do the lines. Let's see how they look with a brush. Yeah, it's a little bit quicker. See, now I'm doing it in three tiers here. A, it's a close-up, so you can get away with it a bit more. And B, I've done that, 
that. I know I've done a little bit there, but that's a tiny one. But basically it's that one, that one, and that one. So it's three different levels and layers. I quite like these thicker lines. Hmm. Now, will I go ahead and do, you know, do this, I think, first of all? Try and shield them. Well, it's what he would have done. It's how Dick Brown would have done it. Um. Yeah. Sorted. So when I'm doing it full time, when you've contacted, when you've all rushed away after having seen this, you've all rushed away and said, King Features! Because I don't think they've got the actual names. I think they just answered the word King Features. King Features! Come and take this guy on. And so when I'm doing it full time in my Florida mansion, which I'll call Cocoon Hall. I can think, yeah. That God, I did that comic strip on YouTube. Because now I know how to draw him. Well, there's a nice thick and thin line. Oh, I like that one. It's a thick and thin line. Uh -huh. So, okay, so the next comic strip that I do in whatever time period it is maybe every maybe every two months I don't, I don't know we'll, we'll see how things develop but the next one I'm going to do is going to be the Wizard of Id now I've had a little bit of a discussion on my last video uh, which was what was what was I doing the last one what rubbish was I producing then see I don't pay any attention either uh, whatever it was I, I did um, I had a bit of a chat with Aaron and he sort of said he he would, would you like to see me do the Wizard of Id? So I said, yeah, fine. Now, my two favourite characters out of the Wizard of Id were um, Bung, the drunken court jester, and the spook, that was the criminal. And it, not necessarily because they were the funniest, I just liked the way they were drawn. So... But I can't think of a cartoon that would have them both in. There would be no logical reason to have those two in the same comic strip. So what I'm going to do is the comic is, it involves Bung, the Wizard of Id, and the King. Now, I'll bring that all the way down. Now, I know I said here I did it in three sections. But with Dr. Zook, Zook, he says, checking the lettering. Dr. Zook, I think I'll do it all the way down. I have no reason why. Oh, what am I going to think? So this paper's terrible. Not the brushes, because I can do this on smooth paper and it holds, holds it lovely. And then this will do in solid black. where the rest of his visage is, do you like that word? It's really quiet in the house today. The Kalashnikov kid. Well, she's off it, is she? This the area. That's her, that's her answer machine message, that is. Hello. This is the Kalashnikov kid. Please leave your name, number, and the person you would like me to bump off after the tune. Anyway, she's not here at the moment. She's in Bulgaria with her family. So she'll be back soon. And uh, we'll, have, we'll have more to say on that as and when she turns up. So there's something else to look forward to. Uh, yeah, like I say, it's been it's been a very busy week for me. I've been um, drawing comics pages for uh, Rebellion Comics. So I did the my uh, my monthly kid comic pages. There's three of them. 
and uh, I did something for a new customer. You may or may not have heard noises in the background whilst I'm drawing this of kids' laughter and chatting and everything. There's a private school directly behind where I live called Christ College. And they've asked me to do um, a couple of comics pages for their new students, their new intake, shall we say, who will be coming here in September. And because it's a, it's, it's both a boarding and day boarding school, day boarding for the locals, boarding obviously for children who live further away, like foreign students and what have you. Uh, so they've asked me to do the do's and don'ts, just to, because no one knows what they're doing when they go into a new job, school, college, university, whatever you. So they know that's quite sort of boring if we just list it. So they said, could I do a two page comic illustrating their points? And I said, yes, of course I can. I've got a few hours spare. Give them here. So I did. And they liked it and they're going to use it. So for years to come, my artwork is going to be all over the walls of that private school, this time legally. Yes, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. And I finished it late on Friday, I think it was. So as you can imagine, I was a little bit tired. I didn't get up massively early this morning. I thought, oh God, I've got to go and do a YouTube video. It's this week. Is it this week? It is this week. So here I came. I love the story of uh, of Hagar. I wonder if that is true. I wonder how much of it is true. Whether oh, hang about. Whether he did just disappear down into his cellar and come back up and say, "I have created a cartoon." And whilst the angels was, were busily singing, he brought out Hagar the Horrible. Everyone says, what? A Viking? A likely character, but apparently he loved history, as I do. And um, does he have, I think it's a, a Swedish grandmother or grandfather or Norwegian or one of the various Viking countries. And so he put them together and created this effectively a family strip. And it's such a beautifully drawn comic strip, such a simplistically drawn, but yet you can see that obviously where the uh, the influence of him working with Mort Walker is very precise lines. And then he goes and softens it up with these very thick and shady and dark, very dark images. A lot of black solid in it, because in those days when he was doing it, cartoon strips were still published largely in black and white, which I preferred actually. I preferred it black and white. Here she is, the bossy Hal Halgar. Oh, no. It's not Halgar. What are we talking about? I know nothing! But we've touched on this before, haven't we? Get this beard right. I also think I can remember reading somewhere that Dick Brown said the beard was the worst part for him. There's always a, a part on a cartoon character you draw that you never quite, you always struggle with, or if it's going to go wrong, it's going to be that bit. I also remember hearing that, like the composer of all the Beach Boys music, he used to apparently compose his music. Uh, from a piano that was put in a sandbox. He'd take his shoes off and he'd he'd do all the he'd write all the songs with his feet in sand so that he'd feel like he was on the beach surfing and all that. And 
I, re I remember reading somewhere, like I said, I can't remember where it was. I read so many articles on cartoonists that Dick Brown sometimes used to draw the cartoon with a Viking's helmet on. Don't know that's true or not. So in the true sense, I'm drawing Dick Brown, Dick Brown's Haggard the Horrible, whilst carrying a sword. No, I'm not. You couldn't tell, could you? you could, I could be. I could be. You can't see what I'm doing. You can't see what's going on. Down here, can you? No. Now, here's what I meant earlier on. Over hell, it's a much larger picture. I think you had a few things going on there as well, didn't they? I'm going to do a bit of that. Yeah. Um, over here is much closer, so therefore I did it in three sections. But over here, which is much smaller, or in the distance, shall we say, I'm going to do it in one. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got I got very frightened this week. I went into, into the bathroom and I got one of those pull cords for the light, and it's pitch black. It was late at night. Uh, it was pitch black in there, so I went to pull the cord, and as I did, my eyes alighted at the same time that its eight thousand eyes alighted on me. There was this big black spider there. Oh dear me! Oh, there was a hell of a kerfuffle. I think I screamed. I definitely cried. I'm not very really brave when it comes to spiders. Yeah, and then it dropped. All right. Because normally I'd hit a shoe or, or, or someone else, preferably, to go and hit it repeatedly until it ceased to be. And uh, I, I love animals. I'd never hurt any animal, but I, I turn a blind eye when it comes to spiders. The spiders, I'm afraid, it's either them or me. And uh, it's funny, I, I hadn't got any shoes on or slippers or anything. I just, I was barefoot or something. I, I'm not going to stamp on it. So I didn't know what to do. Oh, it's a terrible state. So when I looked around to do something, it's almost like the spider thought, oh my God, I'm still here. I'm not going to hang around because he's obviously looking for a, a sizable weapon with which to um, to give me a severe talking to. So when I got what uh, I just got a big wad of um, toilet paper, I think it was. I thought, right, where are you, little bugger? And I turned around and he's... And he's, he's like his, his 850,000 million eyes lit up again. He saw the big wad of paper, saw my intention. He just dropped off the wall. Just did a free fall. You almost hear him going, wee! He went. But he, he didn't land on the ground. If he'd landed on the ground, it would have been okay because I could have, I could have chased him across the, the vast expanse of my bathroom and clobbered him when I got hold of him. But he dropped into my washing basket, clothes basket. There. So I'm now looking for a new clothes basket and a whole new wardrobe. I ain't going in there. That's it. Spider owns that. Uh, that was a part of my week. Lovely. Right, there we go. Once again, I don't sign it because it's not my cartoon. Like I didn't sign the handicap. It's one thing doing my version of it, but the second I sign it, that gives it a kind of an ownership. And um, that's when that's when King Features when they come on here and decide to take me on. That's after you've all rang them up. And when they come on, they'll think, Anger Page is taking ownership of already. Not having that. Oh, no, that's not happening. And instead, I'll get a phone call from the solicitor. We're from King Features. Oh, I get so excited. And then I get slapped with some sort of injunction. Now, do I ink this in? I'll probably speed it up, actually. If I uh, put the solids on, do you want to see me do that? Or is that really boring? Are you asleep by now? Have you all fallen asleep? I did. About halfway between there and there, I fell asleep. I know I was talking, but I talked in my sleep. Right, there we have it. I'm now going to put the solids in. And I'm... I'll probably colour it, actually. But, uh... Yeah. Like, subscribe can't see it and I've, I know I've said it already but apparently you're supposed to I went to use YouTube school YouTube 101 
and it says first thing you do mention almost to the point of boredom and tears to like and subscribe hit the notification bell drop down menu click on all and then and then i'll leave you alone this bit i think i think they must have had a lot of a lot of artists must have a separate brush because it really does prolonged use of this and this brush would be no good because it's going to collect there and force the fine point on the end of the brush to no longer be a fine point not a bit of technical rubbish for you right i'm going to shut up put a bit of music on and uh, i'll see you when i finished the solidy bit okay speak to you afterwards There you go, there is the comic strip. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, like I said, do all sorts of work about a little bit there. Forget his sleeve, put his sleeve on, shall we? Yes, do it right. Um, yeah, come back every fortnight. We'll be doing something else next week. No idea what it is. Um, I think actually, well, I think I might know what it is. I think it's going to be, I found a way of maybe showing you how I produce a comics page, one of my comics pages, one of my projects. Um, and we can do that so it's it's, it's not going to be so time consuming I could do a whole comics page and it could take over 400 million years basically the dinosaurs could come and go and I'd still be drawing and I don't think we want to do that so I think I've found a quicker way of doing it and if that does work then that's what we'll be doing next so whatever it is come along because it's very lonely here without you so um, yeah good to have your company any comments, leave them down below. Anything you'd like to say, like to ask me, like me to, like to see me do. Then once again, comment section, that's what it's for. Until then, thank you very, 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 very much for your time. It is more appreciated than you can imagine. And um, come back next week and uh, you know who will be back from Bulgaria. And everything will be back, back on track again. So that's it then. Have a nice fortnight. Bye for now.